The Iranian Navy has several types of submarines in service, mostly small-sized hulls based on North Korean designs. Tehran's military machine is heavily dependent on other countries' weapon designs, be they Soviet tanks or American planes, although the Iranian Navy's newest submarine is the product of an indigenous design. Meet the Fata-class submarine. Iranian state television released footage of a recent military exercise, and among the aged weapon systems seen in the video, Iran's new Fata-class submarine also made a brief appearance. In the clip, the Fata submarine can briefly be seen sailing on the surface. Though not large by submarine standards, the Fata-class nonetheless has some notable capabilities. The FATA is a little over 150 long, and its displacement is around 600 tons, making it much larger than Iran's other, smaller midget submarines. The FATA carries some sort of canister rear of the sub's sail which would likely be used by special operations forces for weapon or equipment storage. Although the FATA class lacks vertical launch tubes, it does have four torpedo tubes at the bow that could likely launch the Iranian JASC-2 anti-ship missile. The missile could indeed pose a real threat to surface ships, but the FATA class's lethality is somewhat hampered by its very small weapon loadout, estimated to be a paltry six torpedoes and or missiles. Once all onboard weapons would be fired, the FATA would be forced to make a dangerous trip back to port for more ammunition, leaving the submarine dangerously exposed. This may not matter however, thanks to Iran's unique geography. Despite the new submarine tech, Iran's indigenous submarines pale in comparison to larger, more modern designs from Russia, China, the United States Germany, just about anywhere. In a blue water fight against any other submarines, Iranian subs would fare poorly. But Iranian submarines aren't intended for a deep water fight. Iran's submarine fleet is more or less literal in nature, intended to give the American Navy pause for thought, thanks to naval mines. The Persian Gulf's shallow waters and small cramped channels could relatively easily become clogged with Iranian naval mines in order to hamper naval operations, and Iran has mines aplenty. Mines are an extremely cost-effective way to deny a more powerful adversary access to parts of the ocean. During the first Gulf War Iran was able to mine large parts of the Persian Gulf, necessitating time-consuming de-mining work. Along with fast Iranian speedboats, mines may be the single greatest threat to the U.S. Navy in the region. Though limited by how many weapons it can carry on board, the FATA class could still pose a serious threat in the close, cramped Iranian waters. One this is however clear, Iranian submarine manufacturing is slowly but surely advancing. While still greatly outclassed by virtually every other submarine, the Iranian submarine threat is growing. The FATA, Conqueror, class submarine marks a coming of age Iran submarine building program. It is a moderately capable coastal submarine roughly the same size as the Type 206 class. More importantly it clears the way for Iran to build larger submarines. Its technology and capabilities are therefore an indication of what might be around the corner. The backbone of the Iranian Navy's iron submarine force is the Russian-supplied PR.877 Kilo class. Three of these 3,000-ton, submerged, subs are have been in service since the early 1990s. Iran has strived for self-sufficiency however. It started in the 1980s with crude midget submarines.
Iran's indigenous submarine program then progressed through several midget submarines, culminating in the Nahang class. There has been significant external influence along the way, notably from North Korea. The Hermit Kingdom supplied MS-29 Yono-class midget submarines in the early 2000s. The design was put into local production as the IS-120 Gatter class. And there has also been some liaison with Russian and Chinese organizations. Ultimately however the FATA is a legitimate indigenous product. Iran deserves some credit in this regard. The 157 feet, 48 meters, long boat is much larger than the gatter. But in design terms it is really an enlarged gatter, rather than a scaled down kilo. The overall layout and hull technology is similar, but scaled up to have four torpedo tubes and twin diesel generators. FATA can probably be equipped with the indigenous JASC-2 submarine launched anti-ship missile which is, was reportedly tested at Belay at 97 war games, from Agdare and the Zulfiker 99 war games. The JASC-2 is based on the small Nasser-1 missile, although there are Iranian reports that the range has been increased. At any rate in practice submarine-launched anti-ship missiles are relatively short-ranged, unless they have off-board targeting. This is unlikely in this case, both tactically and technologically. The engagement range of the missile would be approximately 15 to 25 nautical miles depending on target size, limited by the height of the submarine's radar mast. The warhead is very small. If the Iranian copy of the Russian Ba-111 Shkval supercaviating rocket torpedo, known as Houdin Iran, enters production, then FATA is an obvious platform. Although impressive engineering, the Shkval would be of limited use tactically. The example Iran has shown was wire-guided. A range of mines can likely be carried. These are referenced in Iranian media reports, but no hard evidence has been seen in public sources. Whether it will be seen as worthwhile putting into serial production remains to be seen. My expectation is that it is a test program with only modest operational expectations. Iran will likely continue to strive for larger and more capable indigenous submarines. These could ultimately replace the imported Russian Kilo class which is over twice the size of the FATA. It is also possible that Iran will focus on an indigenous ballistic missile submarine. There is currently no convincing evidence of this however. Similarly, reports or rumors of a nuclear-powered submarine program should be treated with caution.